Time for tonight's episode of How to Do the Impossible, starring two people who do the impossible every six years by winning Senate seats in states where apparently no other Democrat seems to be able to win. As Politico notes, this isn't the first campaign that will force Senator John Tester and Senator Sherrod Brown to rely on their distinctive personalities and quasi-populist politics in the face of steep challenges. Both men won their second terms alongside former President Barack Obama, then won in pro-Trump states six years later. Each time, they defeated GOP challengers who tried to brand them as too liberal. The last Democratic presidential candidate to win Ohio was President Obama in his re-election campaign of 2012. President Obama actually also won Ohio in his first campaign in 2008. The last Democratic presidential candidate to win Montana was a guy named Bill Clinton, who won Montana in his first presidential campaign 31 years ago, uh, before many of these audience members were born. Uh, Senator John Tester. Just Senator you were born before. Se that. Yeah, right. Just, just, just a few years. You so know, in the good old days. Huh? So as the loneliest Democrat uh, on, <laughs> on this panel, uh, everyone out there, whenever they see you guys, they're always wondering, how do they do it? How do they do it? Uh, before we get to that, I want your assessment of what it's like to read how you do it from Politico and from these other places who think they've figured out how you do it. Well, look, uh, I, I don't usually read people's critiques <laughs> of how I do it because we know how we do it. And, and, uh, and I think Brown will tell you the same thing. It's about being who you are. It's about being real. It's about representing the people of your state. It's about leading. It's about uh, letting people know where you're from and uh, what your beliefs are. And what they've always tried to do to me is they've always tried to make me into something I'm not and try to beat that person uh, because they can't beat who I am. And, and that's a fact. And uh, now uh, Sherrod and I have got a pretty good track record on what we've done and accomplished in Congress over the last uh, many years. And we can talk about what we've accomplished. We can talk about who we are. We can talk about what we're going to do moving forward. But make no mistake about it. The playbook is going to be the same on their part. Try to make you into something he isn't so we can run against that guy. And my, my playbook is going to be the same. And I just talk about who I am and what I've done. I'm proud of my record. And uh, I'm proud of what I've done for Montana and the United States of America. Uh, how does it work in Ohio? Uh, the same. I mean, I, I think you go down in a dark hole if you start reading too many articles about yourself and, and look at too many opposition ads. And for me, as I've said on this show before, Lawrence, I, I wear this uh, pen. It's a depiction of a canary in a birdcage given to me at a Workers Memorial Day rally uh, 25 years ago. And um, it helps me focus on, you know, the story. The mine worker took the canary down in the mines, had no union in those days. It was strong enough for government that cared enough. And I, I, I noticed, and Chester doesn't do this, and I don't do this, but the first, your first week in the Senate, uh, they give you really this fancy, cool-looking, mm -hmm. expensive pen. People put it in their lapel. I'm pretty important. I'm a senator. Well, I, I wore that like three days, and I put the canary pen back on because it keeps your focus on where it ought to be. And one of the things is, one of the things I'm proudest of, and John's the chair of the Veterans Committee, I'm his sort of a lieutenant on that committee, and uh, we wrote more he than I, the PACT Act, which takes care of veterans. What we didn't do with Agent Orange a generation ago, if you're exposed to these football field-sized burn pits, you're, you get care from the VA. And uh, John wrote that bill. I helped him in that. It was named after an Ohio, and we both got the idea from talking to local people because he and I go home a lot of weekends, most weekends, and, and actually listen to people in the grocery store, him on his farm, uh, me at, at a union hall, whatever, and it, it, it's, it's how you win, and it's the, way, it's, the best, it's the best way to serve in this job. If you serve right, your chances of winning are much higher. By the way, uh, does sitting beside him make you feel lazy? about the way you use your weekends compared to <laughs> this guy? Because I've seen the pictures of this guy on the weekends, on the summer well, recesses. Well, Lawrence, you've seen He's the, in the dirt. Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence, you've seen the pictures, <laughs> but you <laughs> haven't really seen him do that. And we still debate whether... Sorry to say this, hey, bro, is he wrong? Wrong? Okay. I have a garden, man. Does my garden count for enough? Does his, <laughs> tell me how much it, just garden? tell me how much his garden I'm counts not, to you. I am not sure he knows the difference between broccoli and cauliflower. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you. I, I worked in a 
family farm growing up. I used to milk jer uh, dirt Guernsey cows. That's good. I used to All shovel right. in the barn. I mean, I, I, I worked. I had a real job. Didn't pay much. But no, Chester, test <laughs> he's one of the few people that goes home and actually has a, has a real job, too. I mean, I'm, my real job is representing people, and he does both. Does your style of campaigning work because you've got a relatively small population in Montana where you really can get out there to uh, to people in a way that's much more challenging in a, in a big population state like Ohio? Uh, I can't speak to that because I represent the state that I know and I know Montana. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that uh, Governor Schwinden back in the 80s would say every time you run a statewide election, you have looked or shook hands with everybody who's going to vote for you and against you. And, <laughs> and that's a fact. And because you, you it, it, a state, a rural state like Montana forces you out to talk to people. But by the way, that's where you get your good ideas. That's how you can come back to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. and get, get good legislation passed, is talking to the guys that are on the ground, that are trying to make a living, trying to make the books balance, that say, hey, you know, if you do this or you do that, it would certainly help us out. And then you take those ideas back. And, uh, you know, try to get Brown to sign on as a co-sponsor, and you're off and running. And we've got dueling lapel pins here, I see. What, what's the, what's this your... Is, this is Toys for Tots. It's a, okay. a little thing that the Marines It's a little weird in March week. when he wears Toys for yeah. Tots. <laughs> I've <laughs> always been like Mike Kerry. <laughs> yeah. So, so Brown doesn't wear his Senate pin. I lost mine. I mean, you know, I mean, what can I say? John, John, John had a bad crop yield one year, and he sold his kid's <laughs> other pin. That's, yeah, that's really what happened. Uh, so... On issues, you, you talked about issues right away as you were talking here, and you're describing things you've done. And you say that here the way apparently you say it in Ohio. And somehow voters actually listen to you because Joe Biden has more accomplishments to bring to voters than any, any Democratic president of my lifetime. Voters don't know he did that, apparently. The voters he needs, the voters in Ohio he needs, don't know he did that. What's, what's the gap of, that's going on there between Joe Biden's accomplishments, voters' understanding of it, versus, say, your accomplishments and the way you get voters to understand that? Well, part of it on the, on the PACT Act is I, I've been in 41 counties of the 88, I think, just in the last year since PACT Act passed. I'll go to a VFW or a Legion Hall or or an AMVETS hall or a Polish American Veterans Hall and sit for an hour and a half with 15 veterans around a table and asking them really to get the word out that this, that how important this is. And they have many uh, college, many friends, veterans friends that, that can sign up. But it's also um, being very public about whose side you on. And as you know, um, Ohio legislature passed a six week abortion ban. They call it the heartbeat bill. It essentially banned abortion. 700,000 Ohioans signed petitions. Uh, the Republican Secretary of State tried to disqualify all kinds of signatures. They they called a new issue on the ballot to force a 60 percent versus a 50 percent threshold. We won on that and, and it passed by 13 points. And you can bet next year the three Republicans who want my seat that are going to be running in the primary, every one of them has called for a national abortion ban. So we will make that contrast clear. John calls it freedom. In Montana, I call it, uh, I want women and their doctors to make that choice, not a bunch of politicians in Columbus. Uh, but I think we, we understand, we, we just, John and I know the know our state so much better, always, than the people that run against us. And we know, we know how to talk to them. We know how, more importantly, to listen to them. And I think that's what really counts in the